Now we'll take a look at the IBK Gizmo Color Pick Mode. It's designed for situation like this, where you have a green screen or a blue screen that has a very uniform backing. In this situation, you don't need to use the IBK Color node to create a clean plate. We can plug this plate directly into the IBK Gizmo and dial it in. We'll put the Gizmo up in the property bin. The first thing we'll do is check the screen type and set it for Pick or Color Pick. Now the color here is going to be the color of the backing screen, and we're going to pick that by turning on the eyedropper. If I try to pick the backing color off the output of the IBK Gizmo node, you see Newt goes insane as it toggles between the black and the green, the black and the green. This is another situation where two viewers will help. So we'll come down here to the original green screen, add a viewer, come up to our pane and split it horizontally, and I'm going to move the IBK Gizmo to the right. On the left is the original green screen. Now I can pick off the original green screen, like this, and the IBK Gizmo node does not go insane. Checking the alpha channel, I can now cruise around sampling different areas looking for the sweet spot. So let's say I'm happy with that. I'll go back to the RGB mode. Now I'll set my viewer to look at the finished composite. You're now ready to go into the IBK Gizmo and dial it in for the best look. Here's a workflow tip on how to add more control to the blended edges of your composite when working with the IBK keyer. We're looking at the output of the IBK Gizmo here, and I've added a grade node between the background and the input to the Gizmo. We'll double click on that. To use this, you have to have either the background luminance or the background chrominance turned on, otherwise the background has no effect on your blended edges. So with those turned on, if we go to the grade node and, for example, increase the gamma, it lit up the edges of the output of our gizmo. We can take a look at the color grade node and see why. The background plate is being seriously changed and it's the input to the gizmo. So those pixels become blended with the output. Looking at our composite, we can see it changes the edges of our composite quite nicely. So this is a technique that you can use to add more control to the blended edges of your IBK keyer composites. In the normal flow of things, you're going to want to apply a color grade to the output of your IBK gizmo to color correct it over the background. But this introduces a problem but there's an easy fix. Here's the issue. Let's take a look at the output of this grade node directly. And remember, in our IBK gizmo, we've got background luminance and background chrominance turned on, so we're getting edge blend pixels from our background plate. Let's take a look at what we got. You can actually see the background up here. I've used this checkerboard background to make it easier to see what's going on. Now, if I adjust this grade node, for example, I'll do a severe color correction here. The blended pixels with the background plate have also been graded up, and you don't want this. You want those to remain their original color. So the way we'll deal with this is, we'll apply a reverse color grade to the incoming background plate, like this. Select the grade node, copy, paste it, put it in the property bin, and set it for reverse. Then we'll hook it in. We've now applied a reverse grade to the background plate before it came into the IBK gizmo. It's been darkened by exactly the same amount that this grade node has brightened it. We've now restored the background blended pixels to the same color as the original background. Now when we look at the composite, our edge blended pixels are more natural. You can see the difference as I toggle the compensating grade node on and off. Very often, we want to apply a transformation to the background prior to the composite. With the IBK keyer, this can introduce an issue. Let's take a closer look at our composite here. Again, I'm using a checkerboard pattern because it shows the problem better. I'm going to move the viewer over to the IBK gizmo output, and we can see the edge blended pixels from the background. This comes from the fact that our background is an input to the IBK gizmo. Returning to the composite, as I toggle the background transform on and off, you can see that the edge blend pixels don't move with it. 
That's because they are from the original input, not the transformed input. So there's two easy solutions for this problem. One is you can make a clone of the transform operations and apply it to the background input of the IBK gizmo. Or connect the background input to the IBK gizmo directly to the transforms themselves. And now they'll all move together and you will have a lovely composite. The IBK keyer is often used as one part of a larger compositing workflow, often called the softmat hardmat workflow. The IBK keyer is extremely good at pulling a soft edged mat and compensating for the uneven green screens or blue screen backings. But sometimes getting a good solid core mat is a little difficult, so here we're going to take a look at a broader workflow, how the IBK keyer is used as part of a larger compositing setup. Starting with our green screen here, the IBK color creates a clean plate, the IBK gizmo creates a soft edged mat, very nice soft edges, but maybe it's got some transparency in it. So we'll back that up with a hard mat. And then we'll bring the two together here. So this represents the final mat that combines the soft and the hard mats together. Starting back at the green screen, we we'll do a separate spill suppression. Then we want to bring together the hard mat created here and the spill suppressed foreground there. And we can do that right here. And now we have our finished mat with our spill suppressed foreground. First we have our background here and we do a composite here using an admix node or a merge node. The admix node is very cool because you can blend your edges in it very nicely. So don't hesitate to use the IBK keyer as the component of a larger compositing workflow.